Okay, so now that we have learned how to identify a significant figure, I'm going to give you a sample problem with a few numbers and give you the opportunity to practice what you've just learned. So here I've given you three numbers. Each have several digits in them. And in each number, I would like for you to underline the last, that is the rightmost, sig fig, or significant figure, in each of these numbers. In order to do that, you'll have to identify all of the sig figs so that you can then underline the last one. This shows how precise the number is. Then you will determine how many sig figs are in each of these three numbers. So I'd like you to give that a shot. Go ahead and turn, uh, pause the video now. And when you're done, you can turn it back on and I will work through them for you. Okay, now that you've had an opportunity to practice this and see how you did, we're going to work through them so that you can check your work. So I'm going to go each number at a time, work on the first number, and I'm going to follow all of my rules. So rule A says that any non-zero is significant. So I'm just going to put a little green dot here under each non-zero to show that it is significant. That's rule A. Rule B says that any zero between non-zeros is also significant. So there's one, there's one, and there's one. And already, just using rules A and B, I have identified all of those digits in that number as being sig figs. So I'm going to underline the last one, or the rightmost sig fig, right there. And now I'm going to determine how many sig figs are in e this number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven sig figs. We write significant figures so often that it's just easier to abbreviate it sig figs. All right, let's try it on pro uh, the number two. Here we have lots of digits. Our rule A says that every non-zero is significant. Rule B says every zero between non-zeros, well, we don't have any of those. Lots of zeros in here, but none of them are between non-zeros. The next rule says that any leading zeros, we got a lot of those, before the first non-zero are not significant. So all of these zeros in this number are not sig figs. Finally, we have our last rule that talks about trailing zeros. Here we have a trailing zero, and it's in a number with a decimal. So because there's a decimal in that number, that zero is significant. Now we're going to underline the last or rightmost sig fig, which would be this zero right here. So I'm going to put a nice little underline under that zero. So you can compare these two numbers, and you can see that this number has sig figs out to the tenths hundredths place. So this number is precise out to the hundredths position. However, this number is precise out to the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths place. So this number is much more precise than that number. How many sig figs do we have in this number? Only these two. Now let's take a look at our last number. Any non-zero is significant. We've got three of them right there. Rule B, any zeros in between non-zeros. Well, we don't have any of those. Rule C, leading zeros before the first non-zero. We don't have any of those either. Rule D talks about trailing zeros. And these trailing zeros might be 
but only if they are in a number where there is a decimal place and there is no decimal. That's a comma. So therefore, our rule D says that these zeros are not significant. Therefore, our last or rightmost sig fig is this 7 right here. I'll underline it. Therefore, this number is precise only out to the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands place. And there are one, two, three, three sig figs in this number. And there you go. How did you do?